Okay, hello everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at limits again. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at limits and evaluating limits algebraically. We've already taken a look at how to do this geometrically or graphically uh, in class. And so now what we want to do is we want to take it one step further and we want to take a look at how we can evaluate limits algebraically. Now, of course, we already know that when we go ahead and talk about limits, we're going to be using this kind of this notation. And if we wanted to read this notation again, it says the limit as x approaches a of f of x. Okay? Now we kind of have an idea of what's happening graphically. We want to now go ahead and be able to verify that information algebraically. And there should be cons consistency. So let's go ahead and just think about how we want to go about evaluating limit algebraically. Basically, what it comes down to is you're substituting a in for x into f of x. Okay, so basically, if you actually go ahead and change all the x values in f of x to a particular value a, then basically you're going to, you're going to come up with three results. Okay, one, if you go ahead and substitute it into the function uh, f of x, then what you're going to come up with is a real number called f of a. Okay, and we'll see a little bit more as to when that particular situation occurs. Now the other one is when you actually substitute a again into f of x, but this time instead of coming out with a real number, you're going to come up with some number over zero. Okay, and now we want to go ahead and say that k is not equal to zero. Now what this is actually going to be coming out with is plus or minus infinity, and we'll go ahead and talk again a little bit more about what that refers to later in class. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at the last situation that's possible, is we're going to come out with 0 over 0. So in other words, again, we're substituting the value of a for x into f of x, and we're coming out with 0 over 0. Now, this situation here is going to be called the indeterminate situation. Okay, And what we need to do is we need to do something in order to be able to evaluate what this limit is, because at this particular point, it is not determinable, which is why we're saying it is indeterminate. So what we need to do there is we need to go ahead and manipulate the function just a little bit so that we can go ahead and determine what the value of the limit is. So let's go ahead and take a look at this indeterminate case, and let's see if everyone can follow the logic here. It says that if we go ahead and take the limit as x approaches a of x, let's go ahead and say that we come up with 0 over 0. Now, if we had 0 over 0, then what that means then is that we're actually talking about a rational function where f of x is actually equal to n of x over d of x. Now, I'm using n of x to represent the numerator function and, and for f of x and d of x to be the denominator function, let's just say. So, notice that what happens then, of course, is we're going to come up with 0 over 0 when we go ahead and substitute a in for x. Now, what that means then is that if I go ahead and substitute a into x, and we're coming up with 0 over 0, there has to be a common factor x minus a in both n of x and d of x. Because when I substituted into that, this factor actually created a 0 in the numerator and a 0 in the denominator. Therefore, to evaluate this indeterminate limit, okay, because it is only indeterminate initially, we need to go ahead and cancel the common factor x minus a that is both in n of x and d of x, and then we need to reevaluate the simplified limit. Okay, so let's go ahead and just take a look at a specific example. Now, I'm going to go from this to this to this. So at this particular point, I'm only talking about this a part and this b part. We'll take a look at an example also for c. Now, let's go ahead and say, for example, that f of x is equal to x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. Now, if I go ahead and take the limit as x approaches 0, so notice I'm giving a particular value for x here, if, uh, for a. Uh, if I go ahead and say that the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x, then what I can do then is I, can, I know that f of x is x minus 1 over x squared minus 1, and if I go ahead again and substitute the value of 0 in for x, in this function here, then notice what happens is that notationally the limit disappears because you're evaluating the limit, and then what we come up with is negative 1 divided by negative 1, so we know that the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x, in this case where this is f of x, is actually equal to 1. 
Okay, and we'll go ahead and take a look exactly what that looks like on the graph as well when we come to class. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at a different particular value for a, and let's say that a in this case is negative 1. Then we say that the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x, of course we know that that's what f of x is, is going to be the same thing as substitute, to evaluate that algebraically, we just take that value of negative 1 and substitute it in for the values of x in the function, and we come up with negative 2 over 0, and so that then will give us what we said is either going to be positive or negative infinity, and we'll go ahead and determine, I'm not going to say that this is positive or negative yet, it's one or the other, uh, but we'll go ahead and see exactly what we can do in order to determine whether or not that is actually a positive infinity or negative infinity. So, at this particular situation here, we've looked at a particular value of a, say for example when it's zero, or we actually come up with a particular value which is the same as f of a. We also took a look at the situation where the limit as x approaches a gives us some number over zero, and therefore it's going to be plus or minus infinity. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this last situation here, and I'm going to go ahead and change this, say that this is the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. Now let's go ahead and see what happens to this. This actually becomes the limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. And notice that becomes 1 minus 1 divided by 1 squared minus 1. That becomes 0 over 0. So what we have is we have the indeterminate case. Now, let's follow this procedure here as to what this says. This says here that there has to be a common factor in both the numerator and the denominator in order for the value of a of 1 to make both the numerator and the denominator being equal to 0. And so what we need to do then is we need to factor and cancel out that common factor. So watch what happens. Now that I know that this is the indeterminate case, I can go ahead and say that the limit as x approaches 1 of this x minus 1 divided by x squared minus 1 is the same thing as the limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1 divided by this x plus 1 times by x minus 1. And so there you go. There is the common factor that is creating the indeterminate case. It's the x minus 1. So I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to cancel that. So I can now go ahead and reevaluate the simplified limit. That says 1 over x plus 1. And this is going to be the limit. Oops. And then if we go ahead and evaluate that, that's just going to be the same thing as 1 divided by 1 plus 1, which is equal to 1 half. So notice that what happens is in the indeterminate case, it is going to be 0, 0, and it is going to be not determinable, but being that we know that we have a common factor in both the numerator and the denominator, if we cancel those factors, those common factors, we're either going to be able to come up with this result or with this result. Okay? And so there you go, that's how we go about actually evaluating limits algebraically. So, We'll go ahead and take a look at how all of this is working together, both from a graphical as well as an algebraic perspective. And we'll be sure to make the connections between these three particular situations and what's happening in the graph. So, until that point, I go ahead and uh, invite you to go ahead and take a look at this particular function itself. And take a look at the values that I put in for x, for a. And see if you can actually determine what some of those connections are before we meet the next time in class. Okay, so I'll see you next time. Hopefully that made some sense and we'll discuss any questions that you have the next time that we meet. Okay, bye-bye, see ya.